What's up guys? Badger1 here with Badger Team. I've had a special subscriber request for a tutorial video. Uh, this one goes out to uh, Piggy. He has requested I do a video on the vanilla modules that come with the biz version of the game and their inner workings with uh, any mods that I have loaded when I build a Badger Team mission. I uh, told him I would be happy to do so, so Piggy, this is for you. Uh, I'll just start off with a little bit of basics. Um, we do run a lot of mods, um, just because we're a smaller team. Um, there's only three of us that play, uh, so we're capable of, you know, we find new mods all the time, and so uh, in any given game, you know, we'll run anywhere between 40 to 58, I think, is the max that we're at right now. Um, a lot of them are weapon and equipment mods, some of them are uh, movement tweaks. Uh, it's all stuff that we found um, useful when we were playing. Uh, so we will experiment with a mod, decide whether or not we want to like it and whether or not it's keepable. And then we'll just add it to our, our mod list. And uh, we've kind of got a handle on it lately, so we haven't been adding that many. Uh, but the ones that we have kept are they seem to make our games for the three of us really immersive and uh, yes the vanilla modules that come with the game are completely compatible with any mods that you download um, off of Steam so I'll just show you um, some of the vanilla ones that we use um, and show you kinda how I go about my mission setup so this is basically our team our squad start point I've got a respawn point in here, which you can't see because I'm on uh, a 3D map view. Um, this is the virtual arsenal. Uh, virtual arsenal is really easy to set up. You can place any object down and then use the simple uh, biz script. You can find this online. Just uh, look up biz arsenal function under Arma 3 and Google it up. And it, this is just this line of code right here. You can put this in any init field of any object and it will allow you to spawn an arsenal. Uh, there's also a nifty mod you can get off Steam called Arsenal Anywhere that will allow you to press Control u on your keyboard and anytime in any mission at any part during the game you can have access to the arsenal. Um, I try not to use it but sometimes uh, since it's just the three of us a lot of times we don't play a lot of serious games since it's just the three of us um, so we'll cheat a little bit. Um, I know me and uh, Badger 3 use it. Um, Badger 2 is kind of a realist, so whatever he has, if he's down to one mag and a pocket knife, that's what he'll, he'll use. He won't use the the uh, the arsenal anywhere. Uh, he'll pick up an AK off a dead guy before he'll do that. Uh, but uh, me and 3, um, we like using it. So uh, that's another option for you as far as arsenal goes. Uh, I will generally only have myself tied to the Zeus module which is this right here. Uh, this is really easy to set up. Uh, modules are found in F5 on this side of the map uh, and they're listed right here. Zeus is down at the bottom. If you want to add Zeus uh, capability to yourself in the mission, you just uh, click on Game Master, place down this module right here and sync it to whatever player uh, that you want to have access to it. Generally, it's me because I'm the, usually the mission builder for all of our missions that we play. And I like to be able to go in and challenge us a little bit if things are a little too easy. Uh, spawn us a vehicle if we're in a tight spot or something like that. Uh, give us some transport on the ground if we're far, far away from the next objective. That kind of thing. Uh, but it's super easy to set up. You just place the module down. You'll double click on it. You'll uh, want to set these two options. It has to have an owner. Uh, this needs to be the same as your uh, character that you have it tied to. So uh, Badger 1, that's me. And then you want it to set to default add-ons. You want it to set, uh, you want that set to all add-ons, including unofficial ones. Uh, there's a couple of different options in here. But when you do this, uh, if you use Zeus, it will open up uh, any modded units, any cup, things, all of my pook boats, pook camo nets, anything like that. Uh, it even gives me access to, uh, you know, if I'm going to set down, um, you know, a Zet composition in the middle of a, 
of a battle and give the guys another you know checkpoint to fight uh, you can do that um, but that has to be checked um, in that before you'll be able to have access to all of your add-ons so all of your mods if you're wanting to use all of your mods in Zeus you have to have uh, the default add-ons has to be set to all add-ons and that's it uh, you can uh, right click on it go to connect sync to and then sync it to whatever player you want it to use and remember that it's got to be named uh, Badger 1 you can see right there in parentheses the Badger 1 matches the owner Badger 1 in the module so uh, you can access Zeus in game by just hitting the Y key on your keyboard that's how I have it hot keyed uh, you can set it up different if you want but I do believe that that's the default um, the next one is the support module now this varies uh, for me depending on the mission that I'm building uh, this particular mission is a new one that I just built, uh, which is a sequence of uh, basically objectives that we do on a foot patrol. And I had the, uh, the team inserted by Hilo here, and then we patrol on foot through this valley and sort of do, you know, ammo, cash searches, um, you know, fight off some Taliban, Al-Qaeda ambushes and that kind of thing and work our way down here all the way to the extraction point that was the kind of the point of the mission and you'll notice I have a lot of modules down here and I'll kind of go through them as quick as I can so I don't make like a two hour long video um, but the support module I will tailor depending on the mission if I have um, you know overwhelming uh, enemy superiority and it's just three of us I will go ahead and give us you know artillery support uh, helo gunship support uh, sometimes I'll even include, uh, you know, aircraft, you know, A-10s, F-35s uh, that you can call in airstrikes. Um, if I'm wanting us to be a little limited, uh, if I wanted to challenge the team, I'll just give us artillery. Uh, I won't include any kind of uh, airship support or uh, aircraft support at all. Um, these support modules can be found under supports. There's two ways you can set this up. I have uh, the support requester, which absolutely has to be placed, and no matter what, uh, is the first thing that you place down. And the reason there's three blue lines is because I have it synced to all three of us. Thereby, each one of the members of the team can call support at any time should they choose to do so. Um, if you want only one person, say you have a designated radio man in your team, and you want only him to be able to call, or you want the squad leader only to be able to call, you're only going to want to sync the support requester to that one individual. But um, things get pretty hairy with only three players when you're fighting, you know, 200 so enemies at any given time on the map. Uh, I mean, sometimes we'll be in a mission and we'll be, we'll find ourselves fighting, you know, 30 something enemy fighters. It's good to have, you know, somebody that can call mortars while you're putting down cover fire or something like that. Uh, can call in a gunship, an Apache or something uh, to give support. Uh, while you're, you know, putting down targets or spotting targets, that kind of thing. Um, but uh, you definitely have to have the support request or module down. And it's a simple thing. You just come over here. Uh, I think it's the last one, support requester here. And you just place it down and then you just sync it like you did the others. Sync to any player that you want to have access to supports. So I've already got one down, so I'm going to delete this one. Next thing you have to do is you basically have to tell this support requester what supports it can request. And so down over here on my helicopter pad, I have uh, support provider CAS helicopter attack virtual, and then I have helicopter transport virtual. You will see that there are two different types. There is um, support provider CAS helicopter attack, that is not virtual and then there is a virtual one I will tell you the difference in just a second so I have my helicopter supports here on the helicopter pad this is where they will spawn when your players call them they will spawn I don't know three four hundred meters five hundred meters above this helicopter pad and fly to wherever you call them on the map so if you've got you know enemies in a in a village inside a wadi or whatever and you point to that direction and say, hey, I want the, you know, Apache or the little bird to strike this area. 
then he will fly to that and do his best due diligence to try to attack that target. Um, you can tailor these modules with specific units. Um, might as well go ahead and do that now since we're on the virtual modules instead of the actual module itself. Um, so uh, let's ignore the, uh, the transport for now and just focus on this right here. So this is the only support you're going to put in your mission and you want the team or your players to only have access to a specific type of helicopter. So you can come in here and you'll see this line right here that says vehicle types. Uh, in parentheses, uh, inside these brackets, you can put the um, call tags, is what I call them, for specific types of units. Um, if you're using a lot of mods, you'll probably have you know any number of different types of vehicles. Um, but you can find those tags just by hovering over them. So if I wanted to be able to call a uh, AH-64D from my RHS module, uh, as I mouse over that, under the name of the bird, you'll see that call tag, RHS underscore AH-64D underscore WD. That is the identifier for that particular helicopter. So inside these brackets you would just set it up like this you're going to do quotes uh, rhs underscore ah 64 d underscore w lowercase wd end quotes and then hit ok now when your team downrange is in the middle of a firefight and they call for air support that is going to be the only helicopter that is available to them to call if you want to have more helicopters, you just come in here, come behind this last set of quotes, put a comma, new set of quotes, dun, 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 whatever the name of the helicopter is, underscore whatever, and end quotes, and then it'll call those two helicopters instead of just the one. And you can have as many in there as you want. Um, the easiest thing to do is if you're just wanting to play around with it is just set the thing down and sync it to the support requester uh, basically it will give them access to most of the helicopters that you have that are modded out that are attack helicopters so you'll have the little birds you'll have h64 D's uh, and it's tailored per side so if you're playing with NATO guys it's going to call from the blue four. If you're playing op four side, it's going to call op four birds. So by that, I mean, if you're playing NATO forces, Marine Corps, Army, whatever, it's going to allow you to call a 64, you know, D Apaches. It's going to call, you know, OH 6M, you know, little bird gunships. Um, I believe it'll call the uh, CH 47 gunship birds in. Uh, there's a couple of new ones with the new cup update. Um, that are really cool that have um, they are if I can find them they are uh, Blackhawks that have rocket pods on them there they are right there that is that right there is a new cut bird and you can see that it's got you know rocket pods and stuff on it so that thing will actually come in as a gunship um, I don't think you will get that one with the actual biz module so you'll have to come in and put that cup tag in there in order to call that particular bird but all of the basic helicopters it will actually call uh, same thing with the helicopter transport virtual um, if you're just using you know just a straight module I actually have a couple of different helicopters in here so you can see how it's set up um, these are cup helicopters um, I got the MH-47, uh, MH-60 DAP, that's the one with the two rocket pods on it. And I have uh, yeah, MH-6M, uh, which is the little bird with the flat slats on the side, uh, transport slats. And so they can call, when they call for a transport, they have these three helicopter choices to choose from. Um, if you don't want them to have um, 
you know, specific options, just leave it blank and it'll give you a list of just biz birds that will, that you can choose from. It's pretty easy. Uh, it really just depends on what your mission is. You may only want them to be able to call a little bird for transport. You may not want them to be able to call a, you know, a big, huge, he you know, heavy helicopter in. Uh, you may just want them to have like a light gunship or a light, uh, a helo to fly in and out on. Uh, same goes with the artillery module. This is the last one that I have synced for this mission. Artillery module virtual is right here. And uh, same thing. You just come to modules, uh, artillery virtual, you just click on it, throw it down, you right click on it, connect, sync to, and you sync it to the support requester. You do, don't, do not sync it to the player, you sync it to the support requester. So, uh, this one I don't believe I have. I might have tailored it. No, I didn't tailor this one. But same type of thing in this one. If you only want your artillery to be uh, a mortar battery, for example, you could come over here into um, your units. They're usually under turrets. And you could uh, put the tag in for just the 81 millimeter mortar. and uh, Or you could do the M119, the toad howitzer. You could put that one in just by itself so that when they call for artillery support, that's their only option. Um, the biz version, it'll give you um, the Scorcher. It'll give you uh, the MLRS, the HIMARS system. It'll give you mortars. Um, just a couple of other things I think that it, that it puts in there uh, for the biz weapon choices for artillery support. I know mortars. Uh, the Scorcher and the High Mars are in there, but I know that there's a couple of other ones. I just can't think of them right now. Um, but again, keep in mind the scope of your mission. Um, you don't want to, if you're just having your team go out and fight, you know, a couple of dozen guys, you don't want to have them get up on a hilltop someplace, call a High Mars strike, and bam, the mission's over. Um, you want to kind of keep that in mind when you build your mission. Uh, keep your uh, keep the forces balanced so that it keeps your mission challenging. Um, the last one, the one that I don't have added, is uh, airstrike, which is on here as well. Uh, cast bombing run virtual. Now I could put this right here. Now these aircraft spawn in the air; they don't spawn on the runway. Uh, but I'll show you the difference uh, between the two, virtual and non-virtual. Uh, with this particular module right here. Um, so right here I'm going to put uh, cast bombing run virtual and I'm going to hit connect sync to and I'm going to sync it to my support module here. So now my team has helicopter gunship, helicopter transport, they have RD that they can call and they can call A-10 strikes with this module right here. I uh, do believe that with the mods that I have loaded, I think the F-35 as well as uh, F-18 is in there. And when I have my, oh, and the Harrier too, I have a Harrier mod loaded. Um, for, I have Firewheels uh, Harriers, and so the Harriers will pop up on this module too. Um, and so they can choose from any of those options. Uh, most of those aircraft have uh, JDAM capability, so if you've got a guy on the ground that has... Uh, you know, a laser designator, um, you just call to the target and, you know, pinpoint it with a laser and the aircraft will fly over and drop a JDAM right on, right on the laser. So uh, a little overpowering, but uh, gets the job done if you're f fighting a lot of guys. Um, so I'm not going to leave this one in this mission because I don't want to alter it. We've only played it a couple of times. So I'm going to take that one out. So the difference between virtual and the actual um, artillery, you have to set it up differently. So let's say, I will just use this one since it's not customized at all. So I'm going to take away that artillery module and I'm going to put down support provider artillery. Okay, Still has to be synced to the support requester. And so you come over here sync it to the support requester you go back over here now 
it is expecting to be attached to a unit or several units. So now you have to actually attach this thing to a functioning crude artillery piece. So for this example, we'll just use this M119. Um, this is a it's a 155 maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe a 105. I think it is a 105. Uh, crude. Uh, it does have limited ammo. Uh, and so at this point with this unit down, uh, you're just going to click it, sync to, and sync it to that artillery module. Now, the same way with the virtual one, if they call artillery, this is the only thing that they're going to have access to. If you want to add the mortar, you're going to have to set a mortar down over here, sync it to the support provider. And now your team has access to 105 rounds and 81 millimeter mortars. There's a trick with artillery, in particular mortars. Um, you have to keep in mind your area of operations. Uh, mortars have a very particular range. So if we look at our map, um, we have our mortar position here. We're not downrange very far from our base. Um, if we had enemies probably anywhere within this area right here that I had down as, at as an objective, if you try to call that mortar, it's going to tell you invalid range because it's too close. A mortar tube can only elevate so high uh, and drop rounds. Um, so if, you, if you're putting this down and you try to call it and it says invalid range, it's because your target is too close to the tube, basically. So it's got to be further away. Uh, to fix that, all you have to do is just take this and move it further, further away from your objective. Now it may be all the way out here, you know, in the sticks in order for you to be able to work it. Um, but it still accomplishes the same thing. Um, in my opinion, honestly, it's, it's better to use the virtual and then tailor the virtual module. Um, to what you want because if you're using something like Drongo's area of operations uh, and I've done a tutorial on that already um, if you're using Drongo's area of operations and you have a live crude artillery piece here same thing with uh, you know if you had there's a, like I said there's a virtual and non-virtual of any one of these modules on here uh, if you had a cast bombing run and you had that there, you already know you're going to have to tie it to actual aircraft. So say you've got aircraft over here parked on the on the tarmac. Okay. And these planes are synced to your module, which is then synced to the support requester. I kind of got on a tangent, but I'll tell you why in just a second. So that's that's synced, and your artillery piece is synced. Um, back to our uh, Drongo's area of operations, uh, which is a great way to do a, a all-out overreaching mission. Sends you on multiple objectives. They're very very fun to set up. Very very uh, dynamic to play. But you never know when you know that module is going to spawn. A group of guys with a friggin t72 somewhere close to your base if they recognize that there's an actual place blue four unit here they're going to roll up on your base and they're going to take that out they're going to destroy your plane and then you're done unless you have a script in here that's going to respawn this plane and respawn your artillery piece your supports are out for the mission um, kind of a realistic way to play if you want to play it like that you can and say hey um, you know, we've got to be careful about, um, you know, we probably need to make trips back to the base just to secure the perimeter and make sure that we don't have any bad guys creeping around. Uh, you might even put a drone down so you can have some drone surveillance. Um, you know, if you're downrange and you want to see what's going on at the base, oh crud, we've got to get back. We're fixing to get attacked. We're going to lose our artillery. That could be a cool way to play the mission out. Um, but if you're using virtual, they can't destroy a virtual module. 
they, there's there's nothing for them to attack. It's there. Uh, it's got your customized units inside it, and it stays connected. And you know, they have access to it all the time. So that's generally how I set it up. If uh, especially if I'm using Drongo's area of operations, because we've had uh, our whole base, you know, run over before uh, playing area of operations. Um, a way to combat that is when you're building your mission is you just add a bunch of blue Ford units in and around your base, you know, put some tow missile emplacements and, you know, 50 cal machine gun nests and stuff like that to sort of give yourself a little bit of protection here at home uh, while you're off doing your missions and objectives and stuff with area of operations. Um, there are a whole bunch of other um, modules that I use when I build. Uh, most of them are uh, they're simple, um, you know, especially creating objectives and that kind of thing. Let me get over here quicker than this. Uh, I hope that kind of gave you a wrap up on the support modules. Um, that's about as simple as way to explain it. Um, there are lots of other tutorials online that could probably do better, but that's how I set it up. Um, you can watch any number of uh, other videos and they'll probably tell you to set it up this way or that. But I found that, you know, in my years of building missions, that that's the easiest way to do it. Um, if you're playing and you find an easier way, um, post it on my channel. I'd like to see it. Um, so here's some other things that I do in my missions. Um, there's ambient animals uh, that you can put down. Uh, they're under ambient. Uh, ambient? No. Uh, environment maybe no where freaking animals at I know it's a module animals module animals environment it's not environment effects you can see here I've got my two drongo area of operations and outpost defense animals there it is so you can put a group of animals down just for realism you know a little bit of ambiance um, you can tell it you want you know whatever sheep goats flock of seagulls whatever uh, when we're fighting in the Middle East we're doing Middle Eastern missions I usually use sheep or goats you change the count here and um, you know put a um, you know put an Afghani sheep farmer out there um, and uh, you know when the mission kicks off you don't see any animals right now but when the mission fires off this thing will spawn all those animals around him so when your team's walking through here somebody might say oh I got an enemy up ahead oh never mind it's a sheep farmer so it just adds a little bit of realism to the mission um, this right here uh, is a uh, hide terrain objects and this is in uh, environment I believe um, I never used this before um, about a year or so ago I found this and I've been using it more and more in my missions just to kind of change maps up and, and, and you know change the environment that we play in because we play on the maps uh, that we like so frequently that I'll come in and change uh, particular things um, there's two different ones that I use, Edit Terrain Object and Hide Terrain Object. Um, if you didn't want this building here, for example, you could come in here and say Hide Terrain Object, and it just makes it disappear. You can also use the transformation and clear an area and change it from a circle to a square. And so you can do, you know, 15 by 15, and it'll clear out that whole square. And because you didn't, you know, want it there, then you can come into your objects and buildings and you can put something else there that you wanted. Uh, so I would come in here and do, you know, Middle Eastern Structure City uh, apartments with two garages. And I would just, you know, put the building down and replace it, you know, to sort of change the environment. And guys get used to seeing buildings and they know all the cool hiding places. Change it up on them, you know, uh, edit those terrain objects and move buildings around. You know, make a make a compound out of it. Take two apartment buildings like this and face them towards one another. You know, and uh, 
they get up on the map and they're like, hey, wait a minute, this is, is this the same town? This is the same town. I know it's the same town, but the buildings are different. Um, you know, turn them in towards one another. There's so many different ways you can do it. Um, you can also do it with, uh, uh, you can do it with uh, trees. You can make it as small or as, as large as you want. I could erase this entire town if I wanted to just by making the marker um, big. Um, in fact, I'll show you what that looks like. We wanted to do 150. 150, change it to a square. Boom. Just to get rid of the entire town. And as you move it around, it will, um, you know, put, put the buildings back because it's not deleting those. Um, so that's a pretty cool one. Uh, you can edit terrain objects as well, which is another cool one. Um, say you like a particular object, but you just want it edited. Like say you like this wall, but you want it to be damaged instead. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can do destroyed, uh, which is cool. And then, you know, it'll do the animation or whatever the replacement object is for the damage. You can knock stuff down and that kind of stuff. Um, so those are two that I that I use pretty frequently. Um, when you are doing uh, effects, I use effects a lot in my mission. Uh, I use quite a bit in this one. Um, I wanted to do a sort of um, ISIS retreat kind of scene. Uh, this mission is usually played at nighttime, and so uh, I have a bunch of wrecked vehicles. And inside those wrecked vehicles, I have fire and smoke. Um, so when the guys finally get through with this objective and they come down this road, uh, they're going to see all these bomb marks, um, you know, bomb craters and stuff, and a whole line of just destroyed vehicles. And we actually had a really, really uh, good firefight in these burning vehicles um, right at um, right before the sun came up, and it was it was pretty challenging. Um, I'll put it back dark so you can see what that looks like. Um, get it a little darker outside. And go into spectate mode so you can kind of see. Get it just the right light. That's probably good. And then we'll go into spectate. A second to load up here. This is spectator mode. Um, this is just uh, you can go to free camera from here. I use this when I'm building my missions all the time. You do free camera. Be advised, support units are now on standby. Out. So this is what that scene looks like in in mission when the guys walk up on it. You've got all these wrecked vehicles that are still on fire, all the crater marks and everything. Um, can kind of see what I've done over here, my emplacements that I've got set, um, uh, units that I have on patrol, uh, guards standing watch, got a foot patrol coming through town here. Um, I would suggest um, I use quite a few scripts in my missions when I build. Um, a lot of the functions are biz functions. Uh, you just need to look them up. The, the most two common ones are uh, house patrol and biz task patrol. Uh, you can look those up. It's just a s simple script that you put in. Um, and it basically just tells the guy just, you know, hey, just go on a random patrol route. So when these guys, you place them down in a group. And when the mission launches, um, they will randomly select a patrol route like they're doing now for task patrol. Uh, house patrol is a little different uh, depending on what you have them set on. Um, 
biz task defend is another one which is what this group is set on uh, so they'll kind of just guard this area you put them on a waypoint and uh, set them on the ground I'll get out of this so you can sh so you show you what that looks like camera may still be in that one spot I don't know yep sure is so you'll just place a group of guys down and give them a waypoint and in the init field it is this right here task defend and click OK and basically what they do is they just kinda hang out and when they uh, they're kind of in an, in an aware state so when they detect enemy movement, enemy presence, if they hear gunfire down the alley or wherever they'll defend this building, they'll defend this area they might even move to contact you know it just kind of depends on how you have them set on um, task patrol guys are the same way they will patrol their little route until they come into enemy contact at which point they'll uh, go into whatever behavior they need to to you know get the fight on um, probably the biggest um, AI script that I run in every one of my missions is called VCOM AI uh, it's downloadable from Steam uh, you gotta put it in your mission and uh, there's a readable in there that tells you how to uh, make it work but it dramatically changes the way the AI behaves inside Arma as a whole um, you can build one mission without VCOM AI running and play through it build the exact same mission and put VCOM AI in it and it will play totally different because the enemy actually behaves like enemy um, they will become suppressed they will try to flank you they use smoke grenades um, and there's a whole bunch of different tweaks uh, that you can do to that uh, that script itself uh, as far as changing AI behavior um, guys will use, use RPGs against buildings um, they use uh, hand grenades more frequently uh, if you have enemy demo specialists who are running a mission one time and we're inside a courtyard kinda like this and uh, we were kinda starting to get overrun and uh, the enemy had a demo specialist with them and we were kinda walled in there was a building like this as such and the demo expe the demo specialist um, I believe we were fighting um, I think they were African militia or something like that they were a cup unit demo specialist comes up to this building plants place charges and just levels the whole building so they could get to us on the inside that's the kind of stuff that VCOM AI does uh, stuff that normal biz AI would just never think of doing um, and it just it makes mission play uh, way more dynamic uh, it seems like the enemies are more like human enemies rather than um, you know bots uh, so I would highly suggest using VCOM AI uh, in in your missions and getting that downloaded and start experimenting with that if you haven't already but um, that's kind of it um, there's a lot more uh, modules in here I could do videos on every single one of these some of these I don't use just because that's not our play style we just don't you know we don't play combat patrol um, we don't do um, you know you know we don't do the old man stuff weak we don't do uh, you know any kind of um, you know our missions are pretty straightforward we like to get in uh, fire up kit up get on a bird fly to an objective and get right into the fight and so that's how I design my missions um, our game time a lot of time is kind of limited uh, so most of my missions are playable within a couple of hours uh, we ran uh, this mission I believe in about an hour and a half and completed every objective um, and didn't uh, didn't suffer a single loss we were wounded several times at the field but we, we never had to respawn which was which was pretty cool um, one last thing um, I do include a halo drop in my mission um, it's another script that you can find uh, online if you Google it up 
uh, but this is just a flagpole. Uh, it's called ATM Airdrop. Uh, if you do Google Armor 3 ATM Airdrop, it'll probably take you to uh, Armaholics website. Um, I don't think I pulled this off of Steam. I think I actually this is an older uh, script that I've had for a long, long time. But um, basically, you put the script folder into your uh, your mission folder uh, or your mission file, and add this to the init line of any object. I usually tie it to a uh, a flagpole, and it gives you the uh, ability to halo jump to anywhere on the map. Um, so if you're wanting to do some spec ops stuff and you don't want to, you know, drive a truck there or fly a bird there or, you know, catch a ride on a helicopter there risk being seen, you want to parachute in kind of covert like uh, that Halo uh, script is, is pretty handy to have and I usually put it in every single one of my missions that I build uh, save for a few that I'm wanting to do you know for realism purposes you know, hey we're forced to ride a helicopter tonight or we have to drive there um, I built a mission uh, kind of similar to this um, I'll load it up right quick before I get out of here uh, open where it was a uh, main supply route um, patrol and we had to do it on um, in a vehicle and I did not allow the team to have a halo jump and uh, setting up a respawn um, the way I build my missions, I usually respawn. Um, I usually have the respawn right at where our arsenal is and where our flagpole is. But in this particular mission, I left the respawn marker out. And uh, when you're using um, Grimes Revive, uh, which includes a respawn uh, script as well, uh, if you leave out the respawn marker, uh, which is uh, in markers over here if you come down to the system empty you should put this down and you can name it uh, respawn west if you're using Grimes Revive um, that's where your team will respawn when they die but if you don't put a marker in there they will respawn immediately where they fell so it makes the mission a lot more challenging so um, we basically had to follow this route in a vehicle. I've got a bunch of IEDs set here. Could do a whole nother tutorial on how to set those up. Um, and these are chained events. I've got another tutorial on how to do this. Uh, if you want to know how to link sequence of events. So uh, we drive out in our truck. We hit this marker. And it says, okay, proceed to this area here. And you get to this marker and it says, okay, proceed to this area here and then so on and so forth until we get up here into the really big fight but all along the way we're you know harassed by enemy fighters we've got IEDs to look for and that kind of stuff so that was kind of a challenging uh, mission for us and it was different um, but that's kind of it um, again uh, this, this one was for Piggy I hope this helps um, let me know if you guys uh, have any more questions or if you want me to do a tutorial on uh, on something else if you see something cool in somebody else's video and you're like hey I want to learn how to do that or I want to know how to set that up just uh, leave a comment on the channel and uh, I'll be more than happy to do a tutorial on it so uh, again shout out to Piggy for uh, letting me do this video for you and uh, hope you enjoyed it and learned something and uh, we'll catch you next time later